Streams are the essential part of this course and today we will introduce a tiny utility class that will help us to make our code more straightforward, to provide more intent, to reduce the boilerplate so that it's uh, more compact. And we will be wrapping the Stream Builder. So as you remember, Stream Builder is this class that reacts to the provided stream and rebuilds what is defined in the builder helper. But it can be quite verbose. So we have this connection state and some things are repetitive here. We will simplify it a little bit. Let's go ahead. So the first thing is to create that class. So I will call this class observer. So it's going to be something which observes streams and does something in return either if, if it's a success it will execute some code if it's an error it will display something to inform the user or developer that something is is not right so let's go ahead class observer like so so this class going to be a stateless widget and let's add the build method okay so as I said this class is going to wrap the string builder so let's do that so we have the builder method and snapshots like that so the first thing is to react uh, to errors to handle errors so we can do the, f the first if it's going to check if snapshot has error and in that case we will return on error handler and we will pass the context and we will pass the error to that callback error so this callback doesn't exist yet so let's create it so it's going to be a function like that let's create the constructor like that we don't need the key and we don't need this okay so that's the first part the second part is that is the situation when we have the data so has data it's similar and if it has data return on success with the context and with the snapshot data and let's create that function as well okay change the order and else else ah, there is some delay it's slow VS code is slow so else means that it's not an error and it doesn't have data so it's it means that it's waiting so in that case by default we will return circular circular progress indicator and let's uh, yeah, like that and let's wrap this with um, center so the idea is that if it's waiting by default display this cir circular progress indicator okay that's the first version let's uh, try to use it so i go back uh, to or rather let's search for stream builder and let's go to first the counter so this is this counter over here and instead of using stream builder let's use the, um, the observer
So we need to pass the stream and we could use the generic types to make it even nicer. So I will use that, the T for generic type. And then we need the stream, which is the stream of T. And let's mark it as required because it's important. And the success on success will be also required while on error is uh, optional. Okay, so we need to pass this like that. And let's add async. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to the... So yeah, so we will observe the stream and the stream is going to provide integers. So the observer knows that it should expect integers. And when it's, um, when it receives something on success, it generates the, the final widget. You can remove that here. Okay, so it's actually, it's counter, so it's here. Something doesn't work. Let's go back to the observer. Okay, so we need to pass the stream to the stream builder as well. Like that. Okay. And now if I click, it works as before. So in this situation, we haven't really reduced the code and it didn't really change at all. So let's go to other places to see exactly why I introduced that. For example, here in the contact list builder, which is this screen over here, it's a good, good example to, to refactor. So again, instead of using stream builder, we will use observer, which will observe a stream of, that returns lists of contacts. And instead of using on, uh, let's import that. Instead of using builder, let's use on success like that. And then we don't need this, this part here. The circular progress indicator is already included in the observer. So we don't need this. We just need to return the data. We don't need the switch. Uh, we actually don't need to read from the snapshot because it's already done by the, uh, by the observer. So it's just the data. We don't need this. And we can return this data like that. And it works. Let's just switch screens. Yeah, it works. So as you can see, it's uh, more compact, uh, easier to understand, easier to, to read. We can even improve it by using the, uh, the shorthand version of uh, like that. Let's go ahead and re re refactor this part as well, which is this chip over here, as I mentioned at the beginning, but I found the wrong file. So here is the uh, stream builder. So it's going to be observer. Let's import like that. Instead of builder, let's use on success. So it's no, it's no longer snapshot, it's the data because it's it's on success, so we know we have the data. And here we just take the data. And that's all. It should work. It works. OK, having done that, let's now go back to the observer and let's make it slightly more um, configurable. So here I can improve it a bit. So this is something, something different, just to make it more explicit like that. So the first thing would be to give uh, the, the consumer of this class the, the ability to uh, replace this uh, progress indicator. So it display a different widget uh, or if it's not provided, use the, the default one. So for that, let's create a function and let's call it default on waiting. And this class will take a context. 
and it will return uh, this part over here like that so now let's add another function another parameter called on waiting let's update our constructor like that and so this has to be a getter like that and now here so here let's add an if and let's say if on waiting is not provided this is not null which means this parameter here is provided in that case let's return the result of that function applied to context so if someone provided it let's execute it here and let's return the the result the widget that is the result of this function otherwise let's return the default on waiting so if it's not provided use the default one which is the thing we had before which is a circular progress indicator in the center so this is kind of verbose we can uh, improve it so we can use this uh, uh, question mark operator like that so if not null otherwise it's the same effect now let's do the same for the on error so let's create let's create function default on error context and this time let's pass error as well and we will just by default we will just display a text widget with this error and here let's do return and if it's provided so on error is not null someone provided this handler in that case execute this and pass the context and the snapshot error otherwise use the default one and pass the uh, context and the snapshot error like that okay so we can be even more explicit here let's async snapshot t to help the compiler a little bit yeah so it's done so we have our observer it handles uh, different scenarios and now if i go back to this uh, contact list builder so i can instead of using the default circular uh, progress indicator as this one i can provide now the on waiting and i can say give me uh, the uh, linear progress indicator so now if i switch as you can see i have this uh, it shouldn't be center actually it should be uh, just uh, So it's uh, over here. So this way we m made the interaction with streams slightly more straightforward. The code is more compact and we push the responsibility of handling the state of stream. If it's either it's, there's an error or it's waiting to this class to hide it, to encapsulate this, this functionality. And we expose just the observer. We have two required parameters the stream because observer uh, needs to observe a stream and on success so the, the eventual the, the final result of the interaction with a stream and then we can provide two additional optional handlers on waiting and on error to um, parameterize even further 
this um, interaction. This observer class, it's not uh, in its final state. We will improve that, and but for now it, it, it does the job. As with other things, we will step by step improve it. The idea is that from now on, whenever we want to interact in our UI with a stream, we will use an observer. So we will say, let's observe this stream and let's generate this part of UI in response. In the next episode, we will improve our managers because they are, there are some huge mistakes in the code over there. So that's all for today and see you next time.